praise the Lord Jesus. All glory and honor be unto Him. I thank, I want to thank our Lord God and Lord Jesus for allowing me today to preach the message to the people of Goa. And I also want to thank uh, Rofe TV for inviting me today here to preach God's message. And I also want to thank all my pastors, all my teachers and my parents who have helped me, who have encouraged me and helped me to grow this much and to preach this message. A very thank you to all. So today, this message is on Good Friday. As we all know, today is Good Friday. And this today's day is of great importance and it holds great significance. So today my topic is about on this day, about what Jesus, Jesus Christ, what he went through during his time of crucifixion. All the suffering, all the pain, everything that he went through how God sent His only begotten Son on the earth for us to sacrifice His Son for the sins that we have committed, sometimes unintentionally and sometimes that we commit even intentionally. And how there are some people that even today, after Christ died on the cross of Calvary, how even today some people still sin. And so, Good Friday is a day where Jesus was crucified on the cross of Calvary for the sins that we have committed. What is most important, one of the most important things about this sacrifice, great sacrifice that Jesus did, is that He chose to die for us, to sacrifice himself for us willingly it is a choice that he took because there are many instances in the bible which show that jesus chose willingly to die for our sins on the cross there are many instances which show that jesus chose god's purpose God's will for our lives. God's will for His life, sorry. We'll go to the scripture in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 8 to 10. We see here, verse 8, Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. So here we see in verse 8 that during Jesus' time in the wilderness where he was being tempted by the devil, the devil took Jesus on an extremely high mountain where he showed him all the worldly pleasures, where he showed him all the kingdoms and in all their glory. And ahead, if you read that devil, that the devil says to Jesus that if you fall down and you worship me, all this, all this glory, all this kingdom that you see in front of you, I will give it to you. But we see that Jesus understood his purpose that God had given him the will and he knows as we see ahead Jesus says that away with you Satan for it is written that you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve so here we see that Jesus chose God's will for his life and that he continued to worship God and put aside the devil's schemes, the offers that, that Satan offered to Jesus. He put aside that. Many of us, we would have 
you know if we were in this position and if the satan came to us with such offers most of us would have agreed and said yes to the devil most of us as we see today that sin today many people they sin like it is nothing they do wrong things like it is nothing so of course most of us today if we were given such an offer we would most of us would have accepted it but we see that jesus put aside the devil all his offers all his lies he put aside all that and he continued on with the purpose that god gave him another example of this where jesus chose god's purpose for his life is in the the gospel of luke chapter 22 verse 42 luke chapter 22 verse 42 where it's where it says saying father if it is your will remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but yours be done this is also another example that jesus chose to die for our sins and sacrifice his life for us where he was on the mount of olives and just moments before he was be- about to be arrested by the soldiers who were coming to arrest him Jesus knew that his time was about to come and that he was about to be betrayed yet he says that Jesus God let your will be done for me and this just shows how important and how great of a significance Christ's death on the cross is just imagine this is for example just imagine right now those who are watching this imagine in your head right now that maybe you are working somewhere maybe you are in school for the children maybe you are working you are there in school maybe you are studying in school or maybe for the people or the adults who go for a job maybe i want you to imagine the adults that sometimes there comes a point in your life or in your job where you get blamed or you get shouted at by your boss for something that your other colleague did or the children sometimes you get shouted at or get yelled at by your teachers for a mischief that your other friend did i want you to think of the emotions that you go through at that moment most of us we feel that why is this fellow screaming at me why is he yelling at me for something that the other person did why why is this unfairness happening to me right now all and on the contrary jesus if we go to look at even jesus could have said to god that god why am i sacrificing myself for the sins of this crooked world why am i shedding my blood for the sins that have been committed by this world why am i being crucified on the cross for the sins that this world has committed he never once said that to god he accepted it and on the contrary even this example that i gave of you being yelled at by your teachers or by your boss that is not even something that you're willingly gone it, it you're not going to your boss and telling him yell at me you're not telling your teacher that shout at me for the mischief that my friend committed you're not doing that but jesus even though he knew that his time is up he said god let your will be done and that is why this christ death on the cross is of great importance and it is really necessary and important for people 
to not take advantage and to keep on continue to sin in today's world stop sinning do you really think that Christ died on the cross so that right after that you start continue sinning again it is not that way Christ didn't die for you so that your sins may be forgiven and that right after the crucifixion you start sinning again that's not why he died one of the main reasons secondly why people sin today you see many around the world today you see there is wars there is people stealing there is murder happening and overall the world today is messed up there is lot of wrong things happening around the world and one of the biggest reasons why people today sin like it's a, like they're walking in a park they sin one of the main reasons for this is because of the grace now many will think that what am i saying that this grace this grace that we have received of god when jesus came you know the grace came the grace period came and today the world is in this grace period and many people today they have misused and they have exploited this grace that god has given them because many people think that oh it's okay to sin because grace is there it's no longer like you know you sin and maybe the earth cra- cracks open and you it swallows you up there's if you sin there's no lightning coming down on you from the heavens and instant there's no direct judgment today so people think that if you you sin it's okay because you're in the grace period but the thing is the bible does not allow this it says the bible says that people should not take advantage of this grace we see this in romans we see it in paul's letter to the romans in chapter 6 verse 14 we see it Romans chapter 6 verse 14 and 15 we see here for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not law but under grace so here it says that just because you're not under the law but you're under grace sin should not have dominion over you it shall not have and ahead if you read what then it says Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace certainly not fix this in your mind in your head fix it shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace certainly not so just because you think that you are under grace don't think that you can keep on sinning Christ did not die for you just so you can start sinning again it completely puts the significance the importance of why Christ died to win and do you really think that God sent his son down on the earth down to the earth to die for your sins so that you could start sinning again do you really think that god wants that life for you the answer is no because if you go to first peter chapter 1 verse 15 we see what god wants for you what god the way god wants you to live your life it is not a life 
where you sin continuously, where you continuously do wrong things like stealing, like insulting others, mocking others. That's not the life that God wants for you. We see in 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 15. It says, But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct. Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. I'll read it again here. Understand this properly. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. So here we see that God doesn't want you to have a life which is of sin. Where you sin unintentionally or intentionally. That's, that doesn't matter. A sin is a sin. What God wants you to have, want you to have is a life which is full of holiness full of righteousness he wants you to have a life when your where your conduct is holy he wants you to have a life where you are fully every single day the full day you are connected with him where you are having a walk with god that is the kind of life that god wants for you and not sin like it is nothing. So this grace that you have, don't take advantage of it. Don't abuse it. Many people do this today. We as humans, this, this grace that we have received, Oftentimes, we humans, when we don't earn something, we don't value it. When we don't earn something, we don't value that thing. It is the same with this grace today. Humanity today, mankind has received this grace. We have not earned it. It is something that God has given us. That is why many people today don't value it. Learn to value this grace that you are given and not take advantage of it. It is the greatest, one of the greatest gifts that we as mankind have received. This grace. Do not take advantage of it and live a holy life and stay connected with God. So what do we do today on this day? on this Good Friday today. What I want you right now to do, wherever you are sitting, is just close your eyes and just think to yourself that this grace that God has given me, how have I used it? Up till now, up till your point, this point of life where you have, you know that you knew that you had the grace and I want you to think to yourself that how have I used this grace that God has given me? And many of us, most of the people who do this will realize that we have abused it and we have not used it properly. We have took advantage of this grace and we have sinned we have not used it properly and secondly also what I need you to know is that this Good Friday is a day where we of course we remember Christ's death on the cross but it is not it shouldn't be it's not supposed to be where only today's day is where you remember Christ's death on the cross and only today's day is where you don't sin. 
It shouldn't be like that. Every single day I tell you, even if you go through your life and at some point the thought of sinning even comes across your mind. Maybe you're just sitting and you feel like stealing or maybe you feel like insulting someone or maybe you feel like mocking someone so that you get the pleasure of being happy maybe. If you get even a thought of sinning, every single day I want you to immediately bring to your attention, bring to your, remember this, that Christ died on the cross for your sins. I want you to remember that, that this grace that I have received, am I doing the correct thing by stealing? Am I doing, did God give me the grace, this grace to sin? Did God give me the grace to do this stealing that I'm thinking of to do right now? Every single day, it is this, this important event that Christ died. It is not something that we remember just for one day. It should come to our mind each and every single day when we think of even sinning. Each and every day. It's, it's, it shouldn't be like today, oh, today Christ died on the cross of Calvary and today I shouldn't sin. But the rest of the days, devil, I'm in your hands. I'm going to sin. Devil, I'm in your hands. Take me in your hands. It shouldn't be like that. Each and every day, even if a thought of sin comes to your mind, remember Christ's sacrifice. Remember the blood that he shed for you. Remember the thorns that were pierced in his hands, in his legs. Remember the crown of thorn which was put on his legs, on his head, sorry. And all the torture that he went for you so that your sins may be forgiven. Remember all of that each and every day before you even think of sinning. And finally, repent of your sins, I'm telling you. Today's day, today's world is full of sin and there are many temptations I know. But to avoid falling into those temptations, you must remember that Christ died for you. And what you need to do each and every day is to maintain a connection with God. And how you can do that is by each and every day. And I'm not saying this just for one day. Just because you do one day, you do prayer doesn't mean you maintain a connection with God throughout your entire life. You need to make sure that you are practicing this. Each and every day, make sure that you are connect, make, maintaining a connection with God. That is through prayers. Make sure that each and every day you read this Bible. This is one of the things that will change your life and help you to have a holy, have a righteous and have a good connection, a strong connection, I say, with God. And I am telling you to repent of your sins and whatever sins that you may have committed in your past or you may have committed, put aside all that and repent. Repent of your sins and from today, start a new journey with God Stay strong with Him, walk with Him, and maintain that connection through reading the Bible each and every day. And this that I said of remembering Jesus, do it. And not just for today, Good Friday. And you will see how you will have a holy and a righteous life in God. So let us all close our eyes and I'll make this prayer. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, Lord Jesus, I pray to you, O God, that the sacrifice that you made on the cross of Calvary for us 
We are grateful to you, O Lord Jesus, for giving us for all our sins, Lord Jesus. And this grace that you have given us, Master, help us not to misuse it, to abuse it, O Lord, and that we use it properly, O Lord Jesus. I pray that this message, whoever is listening to it, I pray that it helps them and that it opens their eyes and that it helps them to build a stronger connection with you, O God, and to bring them closer to you and that they may not just think of sinning and that they may actually walk each and every day with you, Lord God, and have a strong relationship with you, O God. In Jesus' mightiest name, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.